I just got another letter from her lawyers requesting that I send over all of my tax returns and all of my bank statements because she's trying to get 20,000 and I think they're trying to take it up to like 40. Thanks for tuning in to The Source, your source for celebrity news. Check this out. The other day, Tyrese jumped on social media to call out his ex-wife, Samantha, because he says that she has not formally apologized to him for breaking his heart, even after he's been venting about the situation for four years and has even poured his heart and soul out in his songs. And singing all these songs about how I feel and how I'm feeling about what I lived and experienced because she left me out the blue. She can't say she don't know how I feel about it. Y'all seeing all the interviews? You know, the only person that ain't called me to say I'm sorry. I guess all these feelings that you caused don't fucking matter. I'm not playing, but I'm a grown ass man. I'll tell you what I said. I'll tell you what I did. Accountability is a motherfucker. I'm coming up on four years of posting, venting, talking, releasing songs and singles. And ain't nobody called me to say I'm sorry. You know, I didn't even know, I, I did not know I caused that much damage. I had no idea that I, I, I had no idea. Yeah, yeah, well, if you didn't know, you know now, because you didn't heard the goddamn songs, and you didn't seen the Instagram posts, and you didn't seen me on Joe Buttons, and this and that. I've been talking, venting, uploading, all the above. I just got another letter from her lawyers requesting that I send over all of my tax returns and all of my bank statements because she's trying to get 20,000 and I think they're trying to take it up to like 40. And they've been looking at all of my movies and all of the concerts and shows that I've been doing and they're over there like blood sucking lawyers rubbing their hands and Samantha's doing the same thing, rubbing her hands and they're going, oh shit, you know, for the last year and a half, he looks like he's been doing really well. Let's go ahead and get them bank statements over here so we can figure out a way to get this law firm another $600,000 that we're asking for in legal fees. It's a dirty, dirty game out here. Well, y'all gonna keep waiting. Y'all pray for me because I am hearing that the appeals court around my case, my case is gonna be, my case is being appealed, my divorce case is being appealed and they're going to give me the outcome of my appeal August 25th. Now, after Tyrese made his latest video, a whole bunch of people came in the comment section and one person said, she really did a number on him. And then somebody else was like, bruh, you and Erica Mena need to link up cause Lord, y'all refuse to move forward. And then somebody else was like, I would hate to be his current girlfriend having to deal with him talking about his ex 24 seven. And last but not least, somebody else came through and was like, people need to understand, part of healing is knowing you may never get an apology from those who hurt you. It sucks, but it's the facts of life. Listen, what Tyrese needs to understand is that this chick is over it. She's not thinking about him. She doesn't want to get back with him. And she is not studying what happened in the past, except maybe to go to court and collect her child support. But with that being said, Tyrese needs to move on. He needs to focus on the girlfriend that he's with now. And if he can't, Tyrese needs to get himself into some therapy because Tyrese seems to be stuck. And listen, I'm not trying to play Tyrese because it happens to the best of us. I mean, I remember back in my 20s, I was dating this dude, the relationship ended, and boy, did I get stuck. And it took me a minute to get back to myself. It happens. But when it happens, you have to do everything you can to move forward. And even though you want the apology and you feel like you owe the apology and you're sitting there stewing like, yo, I used to lay in a bed next to this person, giving them the best years of my life and they're not going to give me an apology. Guess what? You may never get the apology. Listen, let me know in the comments. Have you ever been in a relationship? And when that relationship ended, I mean, you were stuck. I mean, stuck, stuck. I mean, that person was living in your head rent free for the longest. Let me know in the comments. And also, if you have been stuck, please let me know. What did you do to get unstuck? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for me, I had to go to church and listen to some good gospel music like this.
listen, I am so serious. I don't know what that dude did to me, but I needed the power of the Holy Ghost to help me get over the power of that D. <laughs> <laughs> now, since we're talking about relationships, let me ask you this. Does it matter what your siblings or your friends think when it comes to who you date? For my friends, I don't care what they do. I don't mm. go with whoever you want to go with because whatever I got to say ain't going to matter. They they will team up with the man against you. That's how <laughs> friendships work sometimes. Now, when it comes to siblings... I always have an opinion, um, but sometimes I try to keep it in as much as possible. But my <laughs> non-verbals are very verbal. If you uh, watch the show long enough, I cannot say a word, and you can look at me and think you know exactly what I'm saying. Facts. So you know, with my siblings now, I've done that. I don't say anything, but my non-verbal is very loud. But my friends, I'm not saying a word, girl. If you like him on Monday, I like him too. If you y'all fighting and you can't stand him on Wednesday, I can't stand him either. Whatever way you want to go, that's your life. I don't care. Um, now that I'm thinking back on it, I never really questioned who my siblings were dating because I know that my siblings make good choices and if they were dealing with somebody who was a little suspect, I knew that was just a passing thing and that eventually they would make the right choice. So no, I don't get involved in who my siblings are dating or who they got married to. And they turned around and they made good choices. But as far as my friends are concerned, um, couldn't care less. Sure, when I was younger, I might have weighed in and been like, oh girl, why are you dating him? He's a bum. But now that I'm older, who cares? All of my friends are married, they make good choices, their spouses are mad dope, you know, and that's just that. I mean, I don't have to get in the bed with their spouses, what do I care? Now, of course, if any one of my friends or family members came home with a scammer, of course I would say something. But, fortunately, I don't hang with people, nor am I related to people, who would even feel comfortable bringing home the scammer. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Luckily, all of my family and friends have made very good choices and I'm very happy for them. But that's me. What about you? Do you get involved and offer your opinion when it comes to who your family and friends are dating? Or do you take their opinion seriously when your family and friends let you know that who you're dating is a no-no? <laughs> Let me know in the comments, and while you're down there leaving a comment, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And really quick, yesterday I was trying to show you this video of this young girl singing a shower song, but of course, YouTube blocked it. So, I'm going to put a link to that video and song in the description box below, because I swear, some people were coming in the comment section like, Source, where's that song? I need it. My boyfriend's walking around the house a little funky. <laughs> <laughs> now, as you already know, on July 18th, Ashanti and Nelly welcomed their first baby boy, Kareem Kincaid Hayes, onto this earth. And now, four weeks after giving birth, Ashanti is online showing off her post-birth body and also discussing what life is like after experiencing postpartum. Four weeks postpartum, you have no idea what this body can do. Now, after jumping online and sharing with everybody how far along she is on her snapback journey, Ashanti also said, Funny how life's plans aren't always on time, lol. I've been waiting to be a mom for a long time now, but nothing could prepare me for everything that motherhood brings. This is what postpartum looks like, and I'm loving these super cozy freedom mom shorts. I'm so proud of my body for giving me my baby, 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 baby. Now, after Ashanti shared that message, a whole bunch of people came in the comment section. And one person said, I love how she's given the real of pregnancy and not the immediate snapback story. And then somebody else was like, yes, nothing is wrong with a real postpartum body. Then after that, somebody else came through and said, love how she's showing a natural and realistic postpartum body. And last but not least, somebody else came through and said, this is what they don't show you. <laughs> Listen, all I can say is we love Ashanti, big bloomers and all, because Ashanti hits us with the realness every time and we appreciate the realness. Now, what we don't appreciate is celebrities jumping online asking us to donate to their GoFundMes. Okay, so this is what happened. The other day, social influencer and television personality Tucson Joel jumped online to ask everybody out here to donate to his GoFundMe. Tucson says that he needs everybody to chip in and give him 20K because his former friend and bestie, Ari Fletcher, promised him that she was going to give him 20K to put down for a down payment on his new car. But when it came time to pay up, she reneged on a ninja. So so now he needs us, meaning you, me, and everybody else, to give him 20K for his down payment on his car. 
Now, on his GoFundMe page, Tucson says, I never thought I'd be in this position, but I'm reaching out for help after a heartbreaking betrayal. My best friend promised me $20,000 for a down payment on a car as a birthday gift. Trusting her completely, I went ahead with the start of the car purchase only to have her not give me anything. Despite my best efforts and hopes, I did not receive any payment, which actually after the camera stopped rolling and I did my heartfelt speech, followed by a heartfelt text, and her response was, I love you too, but I have a disclaimer. Then she went silent. After that, I received a call and I was told that it was actually $10,000. She wanted to tell me, but they said that she couldn't risk not getting a good reaction out of me for the show and the internet. In in the end, I received zero dollars from my rock. It was all for clout and the media to benefit her financial gain and reputation. Now, your generosity can make a world of difference. Any contribution, no matter how small, is deeply appreciated. I'm so very grateful for your support and kindness during this challenging time. Thank you for taking the time to read my story and for any support that you can offer. With gratitude, Tucson. Source, can we please see Ari Fletcher giving this dude the 20K check for his birthday? Now, after Tucson came out and shared the challenges that he's facing with the world, a whole lot of people had something to say. And one person said, the entitlement in this world is sickening. This has to be a joke. And then somebody else was like, never count your chickens before they hatch. Our grannies taught us that. And then somebody else said, begging for money for a luxury car in this economy is wild. And then last but not least, somebody else came through and said, he might don't have that 20K, but he definitely got the audacity. The F be wrong with people. Listen, let me tell you something. First off, I think it's very jacked up that Ari Fletcher gave this dude the fake check for his birthday. But with that being said, everybody in a mama knows you don't spend the money or the cash that you expect from a check until that check is cleared. And two, what do you mean you started the purchase of a car? If you started the purchase of a car and now you don't have the money to pay for that car, cancel a purchase of the car. Or when you get that car, you better make the first monthly payment and then sell that car with the quickness because what we're not going to be out here doing is buying reality TV stars who do not live check to check cars. Listen, let me know in the comments. Are you going to be giving Tucson Jewel a little money for his GoFundMe so he could ride around in a G-Wagon? <laughs> <laughs> Hells to the nah. Anyhow, a whole bunch of people have noticed that Nicki Minaj has cut off JT and Ice Spice. I mean, she's no longer following them online and she ain't messing with them chicks. But a lot of people believe that the reason why Nicki Minaj is no longer messing with Ice Spice and JT is because when she asked them to sign her record label, they said no. Now, after both rappers allegedly had a chance to sign with Nicki, but they turned her down, Nicki jumped online and she said this. A motherfucker tell somebody they don't really want to, uh, you know what I'm saying, sign with heavy on it. But then they'll go and sign with the white peoples. And guess who the white peoples finna call always? Oh, nigga, Tanya Mirage, Betty. Oh, they always make sure they get a, you know, get, get the attention of the barbs. So you would be surprised, and I'm not talking about doing ad-libs on any songs, if their name is not on the Pink Friday 2, they're not a heavy on it artist. Okay, so after Nicki Minaj called out some of these other female rap artists for signing under Whitey instead of signing under Nicki, a whole bunch of people had something to say. And somebody was like, she's under a white man's label as well. And then somebody else was like, she want people to sign her on that week behind label. She want to put them in a 360 deal like Wayne did to her, sell their masters just to get herself out of debt. Never sign up under an artist. You'll get fame, but not no real money. And then somebody else came through and said, she should have been started a label. She be doing things too late. <laughs> Listen, if I was Ice Spice or JT, I wouldn't sign with Nicki either, okay? Because every time you got like a new song in, Nicki be like, you know what? I'm gonna do this one myself. <laughs> but if I was a young female rap artist just coming up in a game and Nicki offered me a chance to sign with her, um, I would definitely sign with Nicki because contrary to popular belief, Nicki is mad savvy when it comes to business. Now, if I was Nicki Minaj and I really wanted to sign somebody, I wouldn't be going after JT and Ice Spice. Instead, I would go back to Queens go over there to Jamaica Ave and find the next female rap artist who's mad humble who really wants it and I would turn her into Nikki 2.0. Listen, let me know. 
don't. If you were Nicki Minaj and you just started your label and you were out there trying to find some artists, would you be going after JT and Ice Spice? Or would you be out there looking for an unknown artist that you could turn into Nicki 2.0? Let me know in the comments. All right, so after Nicki Minaj unfollowed JT on Instagram, JT was over there feeling some sort of way. So she jumped on Instagram and she wrote, my heart really hurts. It's like losing someone you love. Nikki, I love you and I'll do everything I can for that follow back. <laughs> oh my goodness, these chicks are just out of control. Anyhow, let me say this. Back when JT was in the City Girls with Young Miami, for some reason, I wasn't feeling JT. But now that JT's going solo dolo and cut ties with Young Miami, all of a sudden, like I'm starting to like JT. Not the music, but the person. I don't know, is it just me or is JT more likable now that she's not linked up with Young Miami? Now, peep this. The other day, Dr. Umar was doing an interview. And during the interview, he got into it with one of the interviewers. Because Dr. Umar said that over the years, hip-hop has done absolutely nothing for the black community. Check this out. And for me to say, oh, hip-hop in 50 years has made sure that black people now are respected. And no, that's never going to happen. What has it done for the people? It gave you... You listen to hip-hop music and you were inspired at some point, no? Nigga, I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> right. We're moving. On, we're we're, we're literally... Days, we're moving goalposts. It ain't done shit in 50 years for the community. I, I, it made individuals rich and that's it. It then gave jobs to... It then gave jobs it to... It gave a couple jobs. The drug dealer giving out a couple jobs too. But the drug dealer is... The drug dealer is <laughs> the, the, the drug dealer is essential to the black community in the ghetto. Yo, did this dude just say that the drug dealer is essential to the black community in the ghetto? Oh my goodness, I'm just shaking my head. Anyway, let's continue. Now, after Dr. Umar said that, a whole bunch of people came in the comment section and one person said, they're not going to like this, but Umar is most definitely right. And then somebody else was like, exactly. Hip hop put it in these young kids' minds that it's cool to kill our own and deal drugs and be a gangbanger. Huge cost to the community and zero gain. And then somebody else came through and said, hip hop gave plenty of men access for wealth and entrepreneurship. Sold many black labels and merchandise that poured money back into the community. It said many black young men on a path to artistry and also has been used as a political tool. Hip hop is fed not only black people, but the world and it's not done yet. And then last but not least, somebody else came through and said, I mean, what has rock, country, jazz, or any of the other genres that we pioneered done for us or anybody else? What is the rubric that we're judging art on? <laughs> Very good question. Well, anyway, let me know what you think. Do you agree with Dr. Umar when he says that after 50 years, hip hop has done absolutely nothing for the black community? Let me know what you think about that in the comments. But as you know, Dr. Umar wasn't done because he also went on to call out a whole bunch of celebrities, including Steve Harvey, for endorsing Kamala Harris. Check this out. President Kamala Harris and went on to say that he believes other celebrities are being paid to support Vice President Kamala. Kamala uh, for her bid for the White House, right? Umar specifically called you out, Steve. He called out Ricky Smiley. He claimed that both of you were paid to support Kamala Harris's campaign. Here's what he said. But if we're going to be honest, Steve Harvey and Ricky Smiley, and I love you both, no hate to my big brothers, but if we're going to be honest, Ricky Smiley and Steve Harvey, y'all only carried on because y'all got paid to carry on. Can we please be honest? Can we? See, I want y'all to understand, overstand, and understand what King Kong is talking about. Y'all carried on because y'all got paid to carry on. Kamala Harris and the Democratic Plantation is paying you celebrities, paying you to shame black people into voting. Y'all know we're not going to get nothing out of that vote. Y'all know we're not going to get nothing out of that vote. Y'all know y'all not, we not going to get nothing out of the vote, but they being paid, y'all being bought. They offer me 10K for an interview with Kamala Harris. I don't want your money, but we can definitely do the interview. Steve. Well, first of all, we're going to have her on her again or how many other times it's mm -hmm. needed to get her yeah. into office. <laughs> to get the vote. Uh, Brother Umar, let me say this, man. I absolutely love some of the things you say. Mm -hmm. I really, really do, man. Some of the stuff I don't always agree with, but ain't nobody got to agree with everything I say. But let me clear the air on something. 
please. You can't hire Steve Harvey for ten thousand dollars to do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> let me just let me just a that out the way. I can be. I don't know where you got that number from, but you can't offer Steve Harvey ten thousand to do nothing. Now you can you can go through the industry and ask about me. <laughs> That's Bro, a. let me tell you something. <laughs> Omar, Omar, let me tell you something, man. And there ain't no hate here at all, cause I, cause I like some of the work he does. I really do. Yeah. Uh, listen, man, I, I don't. He said I don't too. do nothing, nothing for ten thousand dollars. Don't even, don't even insult, don't <laughs> insult the brand equity that I built over these thirty years yeah. of television. I, I just don't, man. And uh -huh. I'm, I'm doing this absolutely free of charge because uh -huh. I want this country to be in her hands mm -hmm. as opposed to Donald Trump's hand. Mm -hmm. That's why I do it. Thank now, you. me and Ricky Smiley happen to be on the same page. Now, we Q's now. And so is D.L. Hughes. Mm -hmm. And Q's kind of run the airways of black radio okay all right yeah. the cues is running the airways of black radio all right purple but, okay. mm -hmm. but we also understand what's at stake here so oh, no uh -huh. i haven't yeah. received a single dollar from anybody to do <laughs> what i do and i i'm doing it gladly for free yes. and i'm going you to her. freely have her on here again and again and again I am going to freely uh -huh. ask soft ass questions. <laughs> I am going to freely lob the basketball so she can slam dunk all these mm -hmm. questions. Oh, yes. I am going to that. freely sit here and agree. So the black okay. vote, the black vote is not for sale. Mm -hmm. But it but is a very important block of votes. Yeah. That can control the outcome of this election and if That's i right. have my way if it is in within god's will she will be the next president of the united states because the alternative see there's only two people running for president yeah it's kamala harris my madam vice president kamala harris or Democrat. donald trump yeah. that's that's the choice yeah. so i don't know <laughs> You know, and if somebody offered you 10, you I, you should have took it. But ain't nobody <laughs> offered me nothing. But don't, <laughs> please don't, please don't insult me. <laughs> oh my goodness, Steve Harvey just pulled the Linda Evangelista. Remember when she was doing an interview and she was like, we don't wake up for less than $10,000 a day. <laughs> That's what Steve did. Anyhow, I don't understand why it's so hard for some people to believe that some people just prefer Kamala. Why? Because they prefer to vote for the person who didn't blatantly say that if given the chance, they would suspend the U.S. Constitution so that they could get their way. And I know somebody's going to come in the comment section like, Sauce, he ain't say that. You know what? You're right. Let me be fair. He said terminate. He didn't say suspend because after he lost the 2020 election, he jumped online and said a massive fraud of this type and magnitude allows for the termination of all rules, regulations, and articles, even those found in the Constitution. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, I don't think that it's a good idea to elect a person who seems to think that our U.S. Constitution is simply a piece of paper with a few suggestions on it. <laughs> <laughs> now, check this out. As you know, Little Dirk has changed his life around and now he's become a Muslim. And because Little Dirk has become a Muslim, a whole bunch of young gangbangers in Chicago are deciding that they too want to turn their lives over to God. Especially since Little Dirk came out and was like, listen, you can't serve God and the streets at the same time. Check this out. <laughs> Push you. 
the ways that you now you like, man, they get on my nerves. Good. You want to help me? I'm going to need your help with this. Listen, praise God, because that right there is a beautiful thing. And it's amazing how little Dirk, who used to be out in these streets being a savage, is now the one that's leading a lot of these young guys to salvation. See, you never know. Sometimes it's the person that you counted out that God is counting on. Listen, let me know what you think about Tyrese. Still waiting for his ex to apologize. The young lady saying she doesn't get involved in a family and friends relationships. Ashanti showing off that post baby birth body. Tucson Jewel asking everybody to donate to his GoFundMe because Ari Fletcher didn't give him his 20K for his birthday to put down on his new car. Nicki Minaj blocking Ice Spice and JT because they allegedly didn't sign her record label. JT saying, Nicki, please, I'll do whatever it takes to get back in your good graces. Dr. Umar saying hip-hop has done absolutely nothing for the black community and also saying that celebrities like Steve Harvey sold out to Kamala Harris and Little Dirk leading young men to put down their guns and pick up some Bibles and Korans. Let me know what you think about all of that in the comments and while you're down there leaving a comment, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to The Source, your source for celebrity news. Peace.